Here we go, folks. Final week until the Iowa caucuses. And you know a lot of Democrats are still trying to decide who they want to support on caucus night. Here in Iowa, we often get the chance to see these candidates in person. Sometimes we don't have a choice, but it turns out we're not just <laughs> relying on that alone. We use a lot of sources to make these selections. And here to talk about uh, a study on how we decide things is uh, Dr. Kelly Winfrey from the Greenlee School of Journalism and Communication at Iowa State. My alma mater, you did a survey of 500 Democrats who planned a caucus. Yes. Uh, you learned some really interesting things from this. First of all, it's not always what we think. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised by the findings. Yeah. Um, uh, local, or excuse me, National Network News was the most frequently used source for information on candidates uh, and the uh, most important in making a decision. And I was a little surprised that we weren't seeing more internet or more in-person uh, uh, events mm -hmm. as, as factors. And this is, um, number two just jumps out at me more than anything because it is probably not surprising, but also sort of sad that the campaign <laughs> advertising has that much effect on people's opinions. Do you agree with that? Yeah, so yeah, what was interesting here is that people reported that they were getting information from advertising, and that was the second most frequent source. And that was very different than what we saw in 2016. Hmm. Uh, it was rated significantly lower. Uh, and I think part of that is the number of candidates that we have in the Democratic field means there is more advertising. And since there's not a clear front runner, they are, voters are trying to figure out what they stand for and who they are and so advertising might be a little more important than it has been in the past. You know, they, they always say uh, religion and politics, you're not supposed to talk about these things, but Iowans definitely do. This is number three. People are, are getting information on the candidates from their family and their friends. Yeah, uh, which I think is really significant given where we have been as a country in terms of being very divided. There was some research in 2016 that said Thanksgiving dinners were shorter uh, because families didn't want to talk about <laughs> politics. Um, but it seems that at least among Democrats, and they're probably talking to friends and family who are similar in, a, in opinion and partisanship, but that's an important factor in helping them decide who to caucus for. There are a dozen of these that you've identified specifically. And number four, we're going we're gonna to keep clipping through them here. Number four is the local TV news. Yes. We love to see that highly ranked. We wish it was number one, but we understand. Let's get into the next round of four, internet publications. What do you mean by that? So the, these are publications only available on the internet. So uh, these would be things like um, Huffington Post. Um, it could also be websites that you're linking through social media. Um, so it's gonna include all internet only sources, which has been an increasing uh, resource for voters in the past 20 years really, uh, but it wasn't at the top. And I think that maybe all of the talk and awareness of fake news and credibility might be playing a factor here. Right, and you mentioned uh, Huffington Post. Mm -hmm. People are understanding that where they're going for these depend on the slant they're going to get yeah. with the story. Yeah, I think that there's a lot more awareness that what you're finding on the mm -hmm. internet is not um, objective journalism, and maybe that's why you see a little more trust in local news. We like to we like to hope so. We also have the debates. Mm -hmm. You know, we th we put so much focus and emphasis on the debates. They're, they're down at number six. They're only about halfway down there as far as how people are deciding. Them. Yeah, in terms of how frequently they're getting information, it's about halfway down. But when we asked what the most important sources were, debates actually rose to number two. Hmm. Um, so I think what's happening is people aren't watching you know, every debate necessarily, um, but they are using those debates to help figure out the differences between the candidates. And when you have such a big field, that's going to be particularly important. Yeah, hopefully uh, in future debates, candidates will have a little more time to go a little more in depth. Yes. Because that is the one, one of the big complaints of these debates is that you can only scratch the surface on some of these policies, right? Yeah, you're not getting any depth. Let's, uh, let's keep clipping through these. Uh, after the debates, it is cable TV, then newspapers. People say newspapers are dead. Obviously not. Uh, uh, Iowans are, are getting their information on these candidates from them. Candidate websites, social media, radio discussions with coworkers, and then number 12 is seeing the candidates in person, which here in Iowa, I, I think that kind of blows up the assumption that that's the most important thing is mm -hmm. putting the palms together. Yeah, and it was one of the questions I was really interested in with this research was to say, yeah, you know, in Iowa, obviously this isn't really important. Uh, and then I looked at the data and apparently it's not mm. as important. Uh, and even when asking how important that information is in making their decision to caucus, it ranked number eight. So it was pretty consistently low. Dr. Kelly Winfrey, uh, thanks so much for 
peeling the veil back and, and showing us. We know what Iowans do. Thanks for showing us how they operate. Thank you.